a big new Nvidia update's coming out that's going to be absolutely huge for gamers, and AMD's creating what could be the biggest, most powerful GPU ever created. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by CDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 20% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Alright, so first let's go ahead and talk about that big NVIDIA update, and in fact it's going to be two big updates coming to all RTX owners in the form of some DLSS updates that are going to be absolutely huge. And the first one I want to talk about is going to be DLSS 2.2, which is going to resolve a lot of issues that people currently complain about with the current DLSS 2.1 implementation. Now this information comes from the website videocards.com and here's what they had to say about it. Quote, by far the most common issue with DLSS 2.1 was ghosting. Moving objects, especially not tied to motion vectors on which DLSS technology relies on, will show artifacts when moving. This has been demonstrated by Digital Foundry in a number of games, namely Cyberpunk 2077, Neo 2, or Death Stranding. All these games currently do not have DLSS 2.2 enabled. They then go on to say, as reported by Digital Foundry, DLSS 2.2 almost completely removes this ghosting effect, especially in places where it is most visible. So after reading that, I'm actually really excited by this information as, again, I think DLSS 2.1 is really great. It does a great job of preserving much of the detail that you get from the native resolution while giving you a massive performance increase, but it does have that issue of ghosting that I've complained about many times. I've definitely complained about it, I believe, over on places like Twitter, and I think this is probably one of the biggest issues with DLSS to this day, so if they can mostly get that resolved, it's going to be an absolutely huge deal for gamers. And in fact, when I made my FSR video, one of the main reasons as to why I liked FSR and why I thought maybe FSR would end up actually being implemented more than DLSS was because, yeah, it doesn't have to suffer from that same ghosting issue. And actually, the biggest reason as to why I believe FSR is going to pose a big threat to DLSS is actually just because it can be implemented on all cards. Now, this update to DLSS isn't going to allow it to be implemented on all cards, as DLSS is just simply going to be a more advanced advanced technique than FSR, so you just won't be able to bring DLSS to all cards, but going forward, if Nvidia does start to roll out like a 3050 Ti and 3050, and all of these GPUs in their current lineup do end up being able to use DLSS, well then yeah, this new update to DLSS is going to make it only a stronger proposition, is going to make it that much harder for AMD to try and overtake DLSS with their own FSR technology, and you know, either way, whether you're going to be using FSR or DLSS, these updates coming to these AI technologies that make them look better and run better are only a good thing for gamers and again, getting rid of that ghosting with DLSS is a absolutely huge deal and I can't wait to try this out for myself because at least in my opinion, DLSS already looks really incredible and this is going to make it look just that much better. And to make things even better, another DLSS update which goes by the name of DLSS 2.2.9 should be coming out after DLSS 2.2 which is going to give uh, RTX owners even another option with DLSS to improve their quality and now this information was originally found over on Reddit by the Reddit user Ryan Hardovic and apparently he found it as a placeholder in the Unreal Engine 5 documentation. So what it looks like it's going to be is it's going to be an ultra quality version of DLSS as right now the highest quality option for DLSS is the quality option which is going to be 66% of the resolution uh, whereas this ultra quality option is going to be 77% of the native resolution which should allow you to get an even higher quality image out of your DLSS if you do choose to use that ultra quality implementation and this could also potentially allow there to be uh, maybe Maybe less artifacts on your screen such as uh, maybe less ghosting or maybe you see less weird stuff with people's hair so yeah that's going to be a definitely a good option for people out there who want to get the highest quality image but they still want to get that little bit extra of performance and honestly I wouldn't be too surprised if this ultra quality option even in motion is pretty much indistinguishable from the native resolution so once again here it looks like we're going to have another huge update coming to DLSS in the near future which is going to allow for some big improvements to DLSS for all those RTX owners out there and then finally the last thing I want to talk about today is a post that was found over on Twitter by the Twitter user Lacuzzi that suggests that AMD might be creating what could be the fastest, most powerful GPU ever created. Now, according to Lacuzzi, this is what he had to say about it. Quote, a high-level diagram for AMD's upcoming CDNA2 slash Aldebaran product MI200. 
Physically, it's a hefty scaling from 64 CUs on Vega 20 to 128 on CDNA1 to now two times 128 on MI200 CDNA2. Total interface width doubles from 4096 bit HBM2 to 8192 bit HBM2E. Capacity quadruples from 32 gigabyte to 128 gigabyte. So taking all that information together as well as taking a look at the diagram that was actually put over on Twitter as well, what we can see here is what appears to be two different GPUs that are put together using some sort of infinity fabric, which is very exciting. And yeah, this GPU is going to be absolutely massive. I, I think it's supposed to have like over 16,000 shaders, which is just, it's, it's completely mind blowing. And on top of that, 128 gigabytes of HBM2E, uh, not only is this going to have an enormous amount of bandwidth, but an enormous amount of capacity as well. Now, unfortunately for all you gamers out there know this product is not going to be for you and in fact it's probably not even going to have any display outs but it's just absolutely incredible to see what they can fit on this GPU the amount of shaders they're getting the amount of RAM they're able to stuff on this thing as well as the memory bandwidth that they're going to get out of this GPU is going to make it what I think is going to be the most powerful GPU ever created and I also see this as the stepping stone to their RDNA 3 architecture which much like CDNA 2 should also use this MCM design approach or multi-chip module design which should allow it to get you know probably double double the amount of shaders, much like the CDNA2 GPU that we're looking at right now. So yeah, this is very, very impressive. It's exciting to see where AMD's going with their products in the future. And on top of that, honestly, I think this is going to pose a serious threat to NVIDIA, and they better be ready for RDNA3, because if CDNA2 is anything like RDNA3, they're going to be in for a hard time, because it's going to be a very powerful GPU. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the RDNA3 is going to actually be able to double the amount of shaders that we find currently on RDNA2? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.